In my bed I start to pray And tell God all about my day I woke up in my little bed And put my head up on my head I cleaned my room and cleared my dishes Told mom breakfast was delicious I went to school, learned something new And tried to follow every rule I studied my vocabulary Had some fun with Bob and Larry And so, it's good to know How much you love me, it's true the Bible says you do. You really love me. Your love was with me all throughout my day. I somehow overlooked my bed. It seems my dog is underfed. Forgot to change my Watched one too many TV shows I had some trouble sharing toys And during rest time made some noise The walls are not for coloring Sometimes I'm off key when I sing And so it's really good to know How much you love me It's true can't be done. I don't believe you can do it. Well, then stand back and behold as I throw this switch. It's alive! Alive! <laughs> stand! Oh, my goodness. Look how big it is. Speak! Ah. Walk to me! No, this way! Oh, look at it going! If I can suddenly, where are you going? Come back here! No, don't, don't go near that ah! door! If I can suddenly, come back! Stay away from those villagers! Oh, 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 just four more minutes. That's what you said four minutes ago. Let's skedaddle up those stairs. Your father will be up in a minute to tuck you in. Besides, I think this show might be a little too scary for you. It's not too scary. I... I like it. Yeah. I'm not scared. Just monsters all around me. Big, growly monsters. Ah! Who are you? I'm Bob. I'm a tomato, and I'm here to help you. There's something in my toy chest. It's a monster. It's a big, scary uh, uh. lizard. It's a, it's a baby pickle. 
Uh, it's a cucumber. Oh. Where is everybody? Over here, Larry. <clears throat> we couldn't help but notice that you were just a little bit frightened, so we thought we'd drop in and help. Yeah, uh, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you... <clears throat> Wrong story, Larry. Oh, sorry. Well, I wasn't really scared, you know. It was just a movie with a big, scary monster. But I'm five years old, so I can handle it. Oh, so you weren't scared? Nope. I wasn't scared. He wasn't scared? No, not scared a bit. Well, maybe just a little bit. Oh, just a little bit scared? Oh, a little bit. But not too scared. Oh, well, yeah. Uh-huh. Why? How, how could you guys help me? I mean, if I was scared. Oh, we were just gonna sing you a little song, that's all. But since you weren't even scared, I, I, guess, I guess we'll just be on our way. Yep, see you later. No, wait! I guess maybe a little song might be nice. Well, since you're in the neighborhood. Well, if you weren't scared, then there's really no reason, so we'll just be going now. Sing the song! Okay, <clears throat> here goes. You were lying in your bed. You were feeling kind of sleepy. But you couldn't close your eyes because the room was getting creepy. Were those eyeballs in the closet? Was that Godzilla in the hall? There was something big and hairy casting shadows on the wall. Now your heart is beating like a drum. Your skin is getting clammy. There's a hundred tiny monsters jumping right into your jammies! What are you gonna do? I'm going to call the police. No, you don't need to do anything. What? Why? Because... God is bigger than the Piggy Man. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the Piggy Man. And he's watching out for you and me. Get it? Um, well, I... Hmm. Well, no. Oh. Well, you see, you don't have to be afraid because God is the biggest. What? Is he bigger than King Kong? Because Kong's a really big monkey and he's kind of scary. Next to God, Junior, King Kong would look like an itty bitty bug. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, is he bigger than the slime monster? Because he's the biggest monster of them all. Compared to God, the slime monster is like a teeny little cornflake. Yeah, but the slime monster can squirt slime out of his ears. Can God squirt slime out of his ears? <clears throat> Come over here, Junior. What do you see up there? My curtains. No, out the window, up in the sky. I see lots of stars. God made all the stars out of nothing. He just went, and there they were. No way! That's right, and he also made the sun and the moon and even the earth that we're living on right now. Wow! Slime Monster couldn't do that. Well, even if he tried, he'd get everything really sticky. But do you know what else God made? What? He made all the plants and animals and people too. Wow! And that's why we don't have to be afraid. Huh? You see, Everything God makes is very special to him. He made all the little kids and he loves them very much. And because he loves them, he takes extra good care of them. So we don't need to be afraid because God is always looking out for us. Oh, I get it. So you're saying God's the biggest of them all and he's on my team. That's right. Oh, by the way, there's someone else who wants to meet you. Uh, well, actually...
Actually, my name is Phil Winkelstein, and I'm an actor from Toledo. What? Well, I I was just pretending to be Frank and Salary in that TV show. Um, that was my job. I mean, really, I'm just a regular guy, and, and I wouldn't hurt anybody. Oh, I get it. So when I'm lying in my bed And the furniture starts creeping I'll just laugh and say, hey, cut that out And get back to my sleeping Cause I know that God's the biggest And he's watching all the while So when I get scared, I'll think of him And close my eyes and smile I scared you when you saw me on TV. Well, that's okay, because now I know that God is taking care of me. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman. And he's watching out for you and me. Junior, what's all that racket in there? Well, I was just singing. Well, your mother and I think that show was a little too scary for you. Yeah, well, maybe, but, but you know, Frank and Salary is really a guy named Phil from Toledo. Well, and he's really not scary at all. And besides, God is bigger than any of them. And even though he doesn't squirt slime out of his ears, he made the whole universe. And he's taking good care of me, too. Uh, well, you're right. We don't have to worry about things because God is taking care of us. I do think we should be a little more careful about what we watch on television. And you know what? It's okay to tell us if you're really scared. Okay. I guess you're right. Sounds like you've been doing some good thinking. But it's time to shut the thinker down now and get some sleep. Okay. I love you, little mister. I love you, big mister. I'll see you in the morning. All right. God is bigger than the boogeyman. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. So without further ado, Silly Songs with Laddie. The Water Buffalo Song Everybody's got a water buffalo Yours is fast but mine is slow Oh, where'd we get them? I don't know But everybody's got a water buffalo I took my buffalo to the store Got his head stuck in the door Spilled some lima beans on the floor Oh, everybody stop got it. a... Stop, stop right this instant! What do you think you're doing? You can't say everyone's got a water buffalo and everyone does not have a water buffalo! We're going to get nasty letters saying, Where's my water buffalo? Why don't I have a water buffalo? And are you prepared to deal with that? I don't think so. Just stop being so silly! This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie sing. Everybody got a baby kangaroo. Yours is pink, but mine is blue. Ah! Hers was small. Ah!
Long, long ago, in a faraway land, there lived a young man named Daniel. When Daniel was a boy, he was taken from his home in Judah to live in a city called Babylon, where he went to school in the palace of the Babylonian king. Daniel missed his home very much, and every day he prayed that God would take care of his family and his friends and look after him too. God heard his prayers and helped Daniel become wise as he grew older, till everyone in the palace knew of his wisdom. Then one night, while Babylon was sleeping, the king had a dream. And I wish someone would tell me what it means. We are your wise men. Yes, that is true. And though we're using all our wisdom, we're afraid we can't explain your dream to you. What? But there is one who is wiser still, and Daniel is his name. So before you take another sleeping pill, My name is Daniel. That much is true. But it is God who gives me wisdom, and through me, He will explain your dreams to you. His name is Daniel. That's what he said. But when he talks about this God of his, I think he's kind of lonely in the head. <laughs> I do. Well. Daniel was able to explain the king's dream, and this made the king very happy. Daniel, you have enlightened me. Your job I will expand. From now on, I want you to sit right beside me as the second in command. This was very good news for Daniel, but very bad news for the wise men. You see, each one of them wanted to be second in command. Now that Daniel got the job, the wise men would have to do whatever he said. This made the wise men very unhappy, and they immediately started thinking of ways to get rid of Daniel. we gonna do? The king likes Daniel more than me and you. Oh no, what we gonna do? We gotta get him out of here. Oh no, what we gonna do? The king likes Daniel more than me and you. Oh no, what we gonna do? We gotta get him out of here. We could throw him in the dungeon. We could let him rot in jail. Watch him eat a hungry crocodile We could put him on a camel's back And send him off to Ur With a cowboy hat without a brim A boot without a spur Oh, we could give him jelly donuts Take him all away Or we could fill his ears with cheese balls And his nostrils with sore pain We could use him as a footstool Or a table to play Scrabble on Then tie him up and beat him up And throw him out of Babylon Or... Yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh... I like it It's sneaky And it just... Might... Work! We could use him as a footstool or a table to play Scrabble on Then tie him up and beat him up and throw him out of Babylon The very next morning, 
the wise men appeared before King Darius to try to trap Daniel with their scheme. You wanted to see me? <clears throat> We've got some news, good King Darius. We fear your position is precarious. There are some people here in Babylon who won't give you your due. They'd rather bow to other men. Can this be so? Tis true. Oh dear. We've brought a solution of our own design. If you'll just sign this paper on the dotted line. It's an edict stating most concisely what we're all to do. We must bow our heads or bend our knees before no one but you. I see. <clears throat> Just one more time now, let's see if I've got this straight. A law to prove once and for all that I am great. If I'm the king, no one must doubt my full supremacy. So from this day forth, my citizens will pray to only me. Yes, but what if they don't? If they don't obey, any citizen will be thrown into the lion's den. Oh, yes. Well, I guess that would do it. All right then, good work, man. Ta-ta! So the law was passed, the deed was done. Daniel's troubles had just begun. Everyone in Babylon heard about the new law, including Daniel. But Daniel also knew God's law, and God's law told him that he should only pray to God. So the next day, just like every other day, Daniel prayed and thanked God for the sunshine and for all his friends. He also thanked God for giving him the courage to do what was right, even when he knew it could get him in trouble. Did you say trouble? Oh, you guys are wise men. Well, that's pretty cool. Have you, like, have you always been wise? Or did you, you have to go to school for that. Curious about that cheese ball thing? Hey, I can see my house from here. Daniel, because you violated section 42192 R94006.1-7B of the Code of Babylon forbidding prayer to anyone but King Darius, you are hereby sentenced to be consumed by the lions. Goodbye. Hey, don't I get a phone call? Hey, Daniel, you're sure gonna have fun down there. We're not lying. <laughs> uh, yeah, you better be lying down, um, cause those lions are gonna, um, lie on you. <laughs> uh, what? Mine was funny. Yours was goofy. Lions are gonna lie on you? They're gonna eat them. They're not gonna lie on them. Well, well, maybe they're gonna lie on him, then eat him. Or one will lie on him while another one maybe eats him. Or, well, maybe one will sit what, on like him. What, like lights are gonna cooperate? Like one's gonna lie on him and say, hey, you eat him, I'll lie on him. Come on, we're the ones that are lying, not the liars. Oh, it's not so scary down here. A little musty, but not so scary. Oh no, what am I gonna do? It looks like I'm gonna end up as lions too. Don't cry, Daniel. Fear not, Daniel. Don't you? And though it seems this time you won't get through, God has made a way. 
even though he still didn't know what to expect, Daniel felt better when he remembered that God was taking care of him, even in the lion's den. Elsewhere in the kingdom, the wise men were busy congratulating themselves for being so clever, while the king, believing that he had lost a good friend, decided the only thing he could do was to pray that Daniel's God would protect him. The next morning, everyone ran down to the lion's den to see what was left of Daniel. It's hopeless. No one could survive a night with those lions. Hello? Did you hear something? Hello? Daniel, is that you? Oh uh, yeah, I'll be right up. I just have to say goodbye to my new friend. <gasps> it's... it's impossible. Yes, it is. Well, hello, everybody. See you guys later. Thanks for the pizza. I had pizza? Well, it's a miracle. Surely your God is above all men. Now I understand. For even at the bottom of the lion's den, you were in his hand. I've got it a new law. From this day forth, everyone will pray only to Daniel's God. No more of this silly praying to me business. Well, whose idea was that, anyway? Oh, yes, I remember. I hear they're looking for wise men down in Egypt. Been fun. Got to go now. Yeah, see ya. But where do you think you're going? Come back here, you hey, scoundrels. Guys, come back. You scallywags. Well, not so bad. Stop. I'm the king. You must stop now. It was a sad, sad thing that Madame Blueberry's house had become a big pile of smashed sticks. But with her hard-working butlers and her nice new friends, Madame knew everything was going to be just fine. And most important of all, this once very Blueberry was truly thankful that day for everything she had and seemed, though it may have been the late afternoon light, not quite so blue. How did that song go again? Let's see. We thank God for this day, for the sun in the sky, for the friends that we have, for our yummy apple pie, for the love that he shares, cause he listens to our prayers. That's why we say thanks every day. Because a thankful heart is a happy you turned out to be. If I had half a mind, I'd just throw you in a ditch and be done with you. What? Oh, oh. oh that's gonna leave a mark. What's that? Who's there? Oh, my precious! They stole it from me! Who are you? It's mine, I tell you! It's mine! Give it to me! What is? My precious! You mean the bean? My gift! It was given to me! I'm taking it to the land of woe to find out what it's for! No! Don't do that! That's a terrible place! Give it to me! I know what it's for! It's for me! Make it by yourself. These woods are crazy. 
some squats. Boy. So, what's your name? I am named for the sound I make with my throat. <laughs> Ahem? Yes, what do you want? Your name is Ahem? My name is Ahem. So, have you always been like this? Oh, no. I was once a normal flobbit. You were a flobbit? That's right. A perfectly normal flobbit named Spiegel. Spiegel? You were that flobbit? That flobbit who bought everything mail order? That was me. It's amazing what you can buy through the mail. I was a collector of labor-saving devices. But everything that I bought, I had to pay for. This was a limiter to my life of ease. Then I found it. Found what? I was opening a new crock pot when I found it, hidden among the packing peanuts. It was small like a packing peanut, but it was no peanut. It was the bean. Instantly, my life was changed. No more working for anything. Whatever clothes you want, bang, you got it. Any kind of food, there it is. You want a fountain of great knee to shoot right out of the ground? No problem. A life of ease, right in the palm of my hand. Wow. So what happened? To me? One day, before 10 a.m., I had created and consumed a 200-pound marshmallow peep. Unfortunately, I fell into a sugar coma. When I awoke three days later, the bean was gone. And now look at me! I'm falling to pieces! My clothes are gone! Even my hair is falling out! Have you tried washing it? What? And work? Once you taste a life of ease, my friend, there's no going back. So now, why did you want to come to the land of woe? Whoa. <laughs> Don't bother waiting up for me. <sighs> the Red Gate. It's yellow. Hmm? Oh, they say it was named for the color of the sunset on the day they hung those doors. Don't be so literal. Randolph, the sparks. There's only five. We can take them. No problem. Grumpy? Yes, boy. All right, then. For Toto and the Bee! Turkey? Did I mention it was meatloaf night? Not that this isn't fun. Oh, finish them quickly. We've got a flobby to catch. Watch out for their pointy ends. I got you covered. Have you ever actually fired that thing? What? Sure. Plenty of times. Not a good time for arguing. <laughs> Often smell good. Who wants a cookie? Oh, we ain't had nothing but maggoty bread for three stinking days. 
another cookie. This is a cookie. Nothing tastes better than a cookie baked in a tree. Help us. Can you help us? Please, my daughter is hungry. I don't think these people are evil. I think they're thirsty and hungry. Okay, maybe. But let's talk some more when we're out of here. No, that's why they sent me. They wanted me to help. I can help them. What? Not with the bean you can't. It's my life of ease. It's not for them. It's my gift, and the elders want me to use it to help. They've got their own gifts. Let them help themselves. Toto. Don't worry about them. Turns out they love cookies. Randolph, I know why the elders sent me here. They want me to help. Good thought, but wrong. Scary man! The elders sent you here because I told them to. What? What? Everyone has something they're sure they can't live without. For some, it's fame or fortune. For others, a life of ease. For a certain ancient tree, it happens to be jewels, something of which I have in abundance. You bribed them? Yes. They got what they want, and I get what I want. Ha! Use your gift to help people. How quaint! I hope you've learned your lesson, boy. Life is short. If you have a gift, use it for yourself before you've lost it and it's too late. Too late! <laughs> You're wrong, scary man! What? Who said that? You're wrong, scary man! <laughs> Show yourself! Where are you? So fast, scary guy. Sporks, save me! Cookie Man say no. Oh, bother. Uncle Bill Boy, you're short. Yes. Without the bean, it didn't take long. And your clothes. We're for a much taller flobbit. When you gave me the bean, you lost everything. Yes, I did. But I found so much more. Clothes and toys and fame, and they all feel good for a minute. But the happiness they bring passes in a flash, like straw in a fire. When I left, I was looking for a happiness that lasts. And I found it here, of all places. How? By helping. By using my gifts to help others, rather than myself. I hear you figured out what your gift is for. I thought I had. But the elders were lying. It was a trick. They may have been lying, but they couldn't keep you from finding the truth. So what would you like to do with your gift? I want to help people. Finally know what it's for. 
Yes, that's what it's there for. So let's say a prayer for the wonderful blessings in store. When you finally know what it's for. Think of me every day, hold tight to what I say, and I'll be close to you even from far away. Know that wherever you are, it is never too far, if you think of If you think of me, I'll be with you. And now it's time for bedtime songs with Junior, the part of the show when Junior gets tucked into his warm, comfy bed and is sung a bedtime song. Say, Can I have a drink of water? 